I haven't calculated the exact score it needs to be. But if Sally has a big enough win over Tenor, then both Sally and Samantha beat Tenor in tiebreakers. And Tenor, even though they won the first two rounds, don't qualify. Tenor has just told me in the live chat, no cursing this or I will unleash puppy. Tenor has a new puppy that I will be meeting in just over a month. So I will, they, they will unleash puppy on me. And puppy bites. You don't want to be in the receiving end of genuine puppy bite. Chat, I am a very competitive person. Is Tenor going to be the only one with three wins? Will Tenor qualify? They're against the team with my favorite Pokemon, Kulava. Tenor v. Sally and Magma Coliseum. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely a highlight as well, Jared. Yeah, when you came into the chat, that crit fire blast. Uh, I'll make a note of that one, too. Both corners are Alright, here's these. So and sure to see a great battle. Against Peanut Butt and Corfish. The stage is set and the curtain is up. Meep, I know you're cute and you want to sleep and you're tired. But you're in full health, baby. Oh no, these can no longer escape. It's not like I was gonna retreat. It's against the rules. I would have to reset the fight if I did. It started Hail! In the, Coliseum. in the volcano. Of course. Well, I guess it's tiny damage so far. <laughs> Meep says, I don't wanna. Is well, Meep, if you want to make sure that you make it through the next round, you just attack. If you win or draw this fight, then you win the group. And you can help by dealing damage. The situation is a bit of a stalemate. It's a mental tug of war as they anticipate each other's move. Alright, Corfish lowering the special defense of Slugma. We haven't seen a big hit yet, but that could be a big hit, especially if something like Bubble Beam comes out. Ring out, that's a big hit. More power, the more HP the opponent has. And Badoof is at almost max health. Good hit from Meep. Meep had some really good hits in round two. Let's see if it'll do it again here. Bullet Seed. That's resisted, so even the crit won't do much. Five hits, though. Impressive, Baby Doof. Much shot. Pretty good damage on Gorefish. Slugma has a good special attack, and Gorefish's special defense is not great. Everyone, a bit more hail damage. In a way, this speeds up the fight because it speeds up the damage. But that is four animations of getting hit by hail. Also, when you mentioned Gastro Acid nullifying Levitate and then the algae hit a magnitude into Soul Rock, I thought that was pretty funny. I don't remember in which fight that was. Obviously, it wasn't one of yours because DL. Oh, because Soul Rock is Mr. Torque. So that must have been you versus Mr. Torque. I would say I posted in the comments of that video, but but the, but at the moment that video hasn't even been scheduled yet. Just try and remember before that video comes out, because I don't want to write down everything that's suggested now. Because then I'll just lose track of it. So try and remember for when the videos come out. The videos will start, like the Metrodome Tournament videos, like every battle will have a separate video. They'll start premiering on the 10th, I think. Yeah, the 10th is the first one. 
Ooh, double it. Not even a special attack that they had drops for. That's D's down. But a lot of recoil damage to Corefish. Let's see where the hail takes them. Peanut butts down, so the score's five to five. Taken out by the avalanche of falling hail. Corefish. Two more turns of hail, I think. I'm not sure if we have one or two more turns of the damage left. Here comes Keck W. Here comes Chick. A chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? Torchic starts to attack. A beautiful attack. Duskull became paralyzed. That's not good. Get hit by a big move and paralyzed. Uh, won't do much damage, but Corfish doesn't have much health. It's enough, Corfish down. Might have a paralyzing damage thus skull, but the lead is to tenor. It's that's rose. Meep's done some big moves again. The Tenor will be happy with it. And here comes Tenor's favorite versus my favorite. Marie versus Kolava. The one time we'll get to see this in this tournament. Honestly, I hope Marie takes that Kolava. Roar of time! I said Marie takes that Kolava. I swear. Alright. Alright. Alright, Kalava, you got your thing. You can come down now. Multiple hits. It keeps dealing damage. Deskull cannot move. Tied of four Pokemon each. Time for Kane. See if the pretty boy can deal some damage to Kalava and Torchic. <laughs> Tenor in the chat. Puppy is getting closer. Kane okay, wants to see Torchic sleep. Kalava can't move because of the recharge. What does Kick W do? Aquaray. Heals a bit every turn. If there's no big moves, especially against it, in the next few turns, that can be pretty massive. Nido King uses its move. Nido King as well. Tanner decides, okay, let's set up the Ring, because that's honestly one of the best moves you have. I was thinking earlier while I was taking my break before the Group B matches, what the best moves. Still can't move. And that's the best one. Well, both I was thinking Toxic Spice probably top to 10. What kind of Ingrain, Ocarring are together, but Imprison is the best move. Sure, there's situations where Imprison does barely anything. That's the This best. is the only thing it can do. Until Kulava's down, struggle will keep happening on tenor side. So Tenor will really hope that their Pokemon attack Kolava. Now they have a bit of healing from Ocarina every turn. And sure, if they continuously go for Torchic, that might ensure that KO eventually on Torchic, which means that Tenor will be okay on Tiebreakers. I'm not going to tell you how much they need, because I don't even remember. I did calculate it before.
Struggle on Kulava, that is what Tanner needs to do. Even though Kulava's a full health, Kulava needs to go down, otherwise the struggle will keep happening and it'll be 25% of their max health damage every turn. Quilava still can pull off a move! I wouldn't admit to cursing it. I was thinking about some of the best moves in the game and Aqua and Imprison came up. I didn't say one or the other person will or will not get it. So I don't see that as a curse. I just thought about the moves existing before Group B even happened. It could have been... could have happened um, the other way as well. Pokemon that just used the move went down. That just goes to show you, you never know what will happen at a Pokemon The so Aqua Ring would be really important there. Might give Kane an extra turn. Here comes Nom Nom. Garchomp is sent out. Would it come to the point that Chom Chom the Tyranitar comes in, that extra Sandstorm damage from the Sandstream ability might help take out Kulava. It's the third Pokemon down, on the other side. You know how I am about manifestations. Yeah, okay, yeah, we have talked about that before. But it's impossible to say absolutely nothing. This is the only thing and think about know. absolutely nothing. Pretty good damage on Kolava right now. What does Kolava do? Spike Cannon. Multiple hits! It keeps dealing damage! Yeah, healing... Does that make Kane survive? I think it will, yes! If it's just struggle recoil, Kane survives the turn. Just needs attack from the others, though. Attack is lower, so struggle, I believe, is considered a physical attack? Who's going to take the glory? They go for Arcanine. They really need to go for Kolava. This is what Sally needs to qualify, because even if Sally... Like, let's say Sally wins. But Sally doesn't have enough points to pass Tenor. There is a certain amount of Pokemon that need to have remaining in their win to pass S Samantha. So Sally can still qualify for top cut without getting past Tanner. Alright, Nido King survives the turn. So they got one more struggle out of this. Whether that's good or not. Mm, well, it means the turn less of Sandstorm, and then again, that also means the turn less of Struggle from Tyranitar. Let's keep attacking Arcanine. The other one, Nidoking. You don't get damage, though. Nice job. Sally leads once more. There's a little cut. Struggle on Kulava from Garchomp. Garchomp's big. Garchomp might dodge moves because of Sandville. But Sandstorm might help take out Kulava. If Kulava goes down, there's one more that's better for the tiebreaker for Tanner. They're not two big hits, but they are hits. Garchomp's down. 3-1. Tail whip, that's not gonna matter much. Unless, of course, the physical attack comes in later. Struggles on Kulava, that is what Tanner wants to see, because that al would allow Tarantra later. If Kulava go Ooh, Kulava's gonna go down to Sandstorm! That was enough, because it wasn't intimidated by the Arcanine. 
If Kalava goes down to Sandstorm here, not only is it a 2-1, oh, which it is, in prison is now gone. Tyranitar can use Metronome again. No confirmation it can use good attacks. But it can Metronome, which means no more struggle recoil. But it's still against Barkwolf and against Lugia. Can Tanner be the only one that wins all matches? Lugia starts to attack. Mmm, that's gonna be a big one, especially with the tail whip drop. A brilliant hit. Mm, not as big as I expected. Trying to try some good defenses. Lugia's attack isn't the highest. More of a defensive Pokemon. Magma Storm misses. Yeah, 2 0 is definitely better than 4 0. Ooh, flinch because of the needle arm. Better damage because of the sandstorm. So that wasn't it. Like, Tarantra couldn't use Metronome, but at least it didn't struggle and get recoiled. <clears throat> Astonish, that's very minor damage, but it could mean another flinch. Or woof. Mud slap. Minor damage. Crit? Okay, not maybe not minor damage, but low damage still. Accuracy, accuracy drop. Tarantra's gonna get a metronome off. Explosion. And Tanner wins the group. Assuming the mud slap accuracy. I was almost if that would have been an explosion and then missed one of them. That would have been a very much curse. We saw how my brother, Mr. Torque, use explosion, hit their own teammate for massive damage, and both opponents dodged it. Both. Ooh, okay, survives. The longer this match goes on, the more sandstorm damage. The more advantageous, the more chances for tenor. One good hit. Karate jump. Ah, that's that's it. That's it, isn't it? No one goes three wins in group stage. Damien, who started with a draw, ends up with the best score, two wins and a draw. Damien's the only one that didn't lose. Now the question is, who moved on in Group D? Sally wins 2-0 because of Quilava's Imprison. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> I'm loading it in now. The winner of group stage in group D is Tenor. Tenor still wins the group. So I'm hearing Puppy is biting. Tenor, you won the group. You are safe. I am also not getting bit by a puppy. <laughs> Actually, I might still get bit by the puppy once I get the, to the United States, but not intentionally, I guess. Tenor wins the group with a plus two on the first tiebreaker. Samantha is the second one to go through. The 2-0-3-0 difference mattered. If it would have been a 3-0 win for Sally, it would have been Tanner and Sally through. And then Sally would have won the group. Because then Sally and Tanner would be equal on points difference, equal on points... And then Sally would have the wins against tight opponents tiebreaker. It would then be Sally and Tenor. Sally needed one more Pokemon to survive. But they didn't make it. They didn't have enough. Tenor wins a group. Just, but they win the group. Samantha then ties with Sally on points difference. Samantha ties Sally on points. But in their individual matchup, Samantha versus Sally. 
That was round two. Samantha won that 2 0. So that puts Samantha over Sally. Sally knocked out. They needed that that in prison was exactly what they needed. But they needed one more Pokemon to survive. That struggle from Tyranitar on Quilava probably cost Sally top cut. Because that meant that the Sandstorm could take it out. Sally's out. Tenor Samantha are through. For the YouTube people, I'll see you in top cut.